Hello and good afternoon to all of our attendees today. We are so excited to bring you an inside look into our Gen to Gen research, specifically consumer perceptions of financial professionals. Wanted to let you know this white paper is available as a download in the handout section of the GoToWebinar toolbar, so make sure you double click on that. And we'll also have a brief survey for you to take at the end of this webinar. But first things first, some quick introductions. My name is Tia Stanley, Sales Vice President here at North American Annuities. And because I booked him six months in advance, uh, we've got our AVP of Strategic Marketing, Isaac Norton. Isaac, you want to give us a little, little wave? Thanks, Tia. Tony. <laughs> All right, Isaac, before I hand you the reins, wanted to mention something first, and it's comments that I hear all the time, and it's the fact that North American has the best content specifically for our research studies. And so what I wanted to do is uh, talk about them like it's a collection, like it's a best-selling platinum album, really our greatest hits, if you will. Um, so a quick trip down memory lane, our first hit. Our first research papers, like my favorite, look who's not talking. Um, we've got our sandwich generation hits. Uh, we also have our empowered series, Project Apex. And I feel like we've got another hit on our hands here with our Gen to Gen white papers. And so I, I thought it would be cool taking that little trip down memory lane uh, for you to share how we got here with this research and uncovering these consumer perceptions. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I appreciate the uh, shameless plug of all of all of our great content, not just what we're going to talk about today. Um, yeah, how we got here. So you mentioned sandwich generation. That was actually the start of of what really this research became. You know, so we wanted to dig into consumers. Uh, we're starting to see the first generations now that are actively having to financially support their aging parents, uh, whether medically or or just within their household. Um, and then also their kids, either younger kids or, you know, those adult kids that maybe after college, you know, come back home to pay off student debt or whatever. Um, and so, you know, we really wanted to hone in on the sandwich generation and we did that and we did it really well and a lot of great content we were able to give out to our distribution partners. This is kind of the next phase of that because as we did the sandwich gen research kind of piece by piece, um, we started to see some linear trends happening between the different generations. So boomers to Gen Xers to the millennials to, you know, we're starting to see Gen Z now aging into a spot where, uh, you know, financial preparation needs to be a thing for them. Uh, and so that's really where we're morphed this research. And one of the other ones, Tia, I know that you're familiar with and, and have really uh, grabbed onto is our empowered research. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit in here because there's a couple spots where um, women in retirement really stand out and kind of uh, have a unique, um, you know, insight into what's going on with them. So that's how we got to Gen to Gen. We we started with Sandwich Gen. We learned a lot about communication between generations. Now we're starting to see linear trends from you know uh, generation to generation, um, and you know our our clever marketing brains, Tia. Uh, decided to call generation to generation, gen to gen. So, I mean, it's uh, that's the brilliance that you get with uh, with us. Um, but I think it does help set the picture and set the stage for what we're going to talk about today. Um, and to your point, we have a white paper out there that you can download on this. We're only covering a sliver of what we found in this research. Um, hopefully, you've seen previous white papers that we sent out at the end of last year. And then we have more actually coming this year. So there's a ton of information. And what I like is these white papers are client friendly. Uh, so these are not just for your use. You can actually use them as talking points, conversation starters uh, to actively prospect or continue a conversation with a client or, or a prospect. So Tia, let's jump into our learnings here. And you know, um, as we got the data, one of the things we wanted to look at was how long is this relationship? And honestly, the word relationship is the one that matters because what most of these, these consumers told us is it is a long-term relationship and they view it that way or they even already have a relationship that way. So to me, that's a good sign because in our industry, we know there's some, some bad apples that are approach this business like transactional. And, and, that, and we know that's not, that's not a long-term recipe for success. Uh, and so we want to really hone in on the fact that, you know, almost half 
um, say that nine plus years that they've had their current financial professional, um, and hopefully the current folks on this call are viewing their relationship with their clients as one that's long term. Um, you know, even tactically, a long term relationship means more opportunities for you to grow with their business, but also it's just the right way to do it. Um, so you can see those little flip charts. Those are the um, overall numbers, but we did break this out between uh, men and women, male and female, to figure out are there differences. And you know, Tia, I think that's the area that kind of jumped out to you when when you saw this data. Yeah, I mean that's true. That's that's the biggest thing that jumped out to me is needing to create the longer relationships with women. And to me, a little over 50% of our nation's wealth is controlled by women right now. And I've seen research where that number is anticipated to jump over 30% in the next 40 years. Um, you know, earlier I had mentioned the Empowered program, that campaign, it's incredible. Not that I'm biased, right? Um, it, it really is incredible. And uh, what it will do in a nutshell is optimize how you work with women and couples. So if you have questions, if you're interested, I would definitely take a look at that piece. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, shameless plug for us, Tia. We're never, we're never, you know, above a good shameless plug. So the empowered content, I would take a look. And as a mini spoiler, we are actually going to be adding on to that research uh, this year. So uh, be ready for that. So again, are you kind of a self, you know, a gut check on your business? Are you approaching it from a relationship standpoint? Um, because the clients are telling us and the consumers are telling us that's how they view it. Uh, and, you know, an opportunity, there's 4% that say either unsure, which probably means they don't have a financial professional helping them. So you have an opportunity there. And I think that little spike there in that three to five years, I think that's speaking to what Tia mentioned with, you know, women sort of taking control of those household finances from a retirement planning standpoint, really starting to grow year over year. And we just see it continuing. So Tia, one of the things I really liked in this is, you know, what, is, what are the touch points or the skill sets or, or whatever you want to call it that keeps these customers coming back to their financial prof professional? What matters the most? Um, what is the most important um, to consumers when, it, when, it, when you're dealing with financial professional? And um, I know that the left side, you know, that really, you know, spoke to you and, and I'll let you kind of comment on that. One thing I would call out is if you look on the right, um, these are the ones that were kind of on the, the lowest rated. It does not mean they're not important. However, one thing that, that I've heard a lot and that we see here is giving back to the community, getting being community involved, I think is one you need to think about to say, you know, are you doing it because you want to get back to the community or are you doing it because you want to build your practice? Because what we're seeing is, and we've seen this in this research and we saw it in the empowered research, this idea of the community and giving back time, it's just kind of icing on the cake, but it's not the thing that's going to drive them to you or to, you know, sort of bring them to your practice. Um, I think we'll see here in a second, there are some groups where it matters a little more, but we want you to give back to the community and give time and volunteer and get into some of those, you know, community clubs and things, but don't do it for the express purpose of, I'm gonna get referrals and contacts and network. Do it because you love doing it, and there might be some, you know, side benefits then on, you know, building more connections and and learning about that. But Tia, do you want to speak to kind of those that the top ranking list? Yeah, I do. I, I do want to point out the visual that we have on the screen, where it's the icon or the image of the hand with the heart in it, uh, because to me, I feel like trust uh, that can pull uh, a huge emotional response. Uh, I, it's not a shock that trust is going to be uh, incredibly important because you're talking about someone's retirement nest egg, if you will. Um, but another thing that I'm going to point out here, and you hit the nail on the head when it comes to those different rankings, um, that there's not much difference in the ranking, though, for expertise. Uh, so I wanted to point that out. Clients are coming to you as the go-to educator. And uh, another shameless plug, you guys, I won't do this for every slide, but I did want to say um, if you're wanting to get more tips and tricks as the go-to educator from our top producers, uh, we actually took their expertise and we put that into a white paper. It's the Project Apex Research. 
Uh, so you'll want to make sure that you tune into that. If you have any questions about what you see on the screen where you're like, wow, that's pretty high ranking and how can I strengthen that muscle or Project Apex uh, information can absolutely help you with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I love that you, you called out expertise. Um, I personally, I think expertise and then if even at the bottom there, the strong management performance, I think these are two areas that are undersold by professionals right now. Um, and I get that there are some you know, rules and regs depending on what licenses you have on what you can and can't show, whether it's testimonials or things like that. But you want folks to be kind of, I would say in the nerd space of this, right? You want, as a consumer, you want your financial professional to know what's going on so that you as a consumer don't have to do that research, right? You have time you're using, there's a reason you're going to a financial professional. So make sure you are selling um, and bringing up, again, it may not be the first thing you bring up that might seem a little, uh, you know, talking about yourself, but expertise and how you've shown value to your previous customers, I think actually can go a long way. And I, I do think it's undersold right now. Um, so don't forget about that. And then I do like also that they mentioned the ability to speak directly to clients. And I don't think that means just face value, just the capability of speaking, but can you translate maybe some higher level topics, jargon, stuff like that into a palatable, you know, education based, you know, really teaching, um, walking alongside, you know, T and I, we're both fans of the story brand methodology. Are you a guide walking alongside your client versus a lecturer or, you know, a, a salesperson? So um, pretty interesting stuff and kind of, adding a little layer to that we we dug into those you know those items and one of the ones i'll call out is the uh, community uh the millennials in the community in giving back so i mentioned there are some groups that view giving back to the community more highly they see it as more important and seeing that millennials ranked at that i i don't think is a huge surprise to us right because that's a trend that millennials and sort of quote unquote younger generations tend to be more cause driven or cause um, motivated. And so again, I, I don't think this means you lead with this story if you're meeting with a client or prospect who might fit in that space, but just know in the back of your mind that, hey, if you are involved in these things in you know community involvement and stuff like that, you may wanna bring that in as part of your, your shop's pitch. Um, if, if it's sort of that first appointment where you're going over your process and your model and stuff. Again, it's not the lead story, but it might actually matter more than in that younger group than maybe others. So that's something that kind of jumped out to me, but Tia, what, did, what else did you see? Well, one thing that I wanted to make sure that I noted to all of our attendees that you could have quickly looked over those stats and thought, how could I make everyone happy if all of these demographics or age groups rated things so differently? And I wanted to tell you, please, please don't feel that way. All you have to have is a great baseline, just standard communication with your clients, and then you can start to customize that for certain clients. And to me, I feel like a great time to do that is when you're sitting down with them, either physically or virtually during an annual review. Um, so again, uh, I feel like uh, especially having that baseline communication, that's a great way to build the muscle memory in to where it's a habit. You never have to think about it because you already have a standard set for yourself. So we jumped into, uh, you know, those that said, I do have a financial professional, which, you know, we applaud that just for having one. I, we know the value. We know those of you on this call how valuable you are, especially in the long term when you're walking alongside your clients and making sure they're making you know, sound decisions. Um, but we do ask, if you do have a financial professional, how involved are they? Um, and it doesn't mean like they're the ones pushing, it's, it's you know, are they, are they sort of dug deep with you, you know, working on, you know, is it week to week, month to month, once a year, you know, how involved are they? Um, and we're kind of interesting here, and I think Tia, this kind of jumped out at you too, but usually when we see these bar charts um, they tend to be pretty linear there's a trend that shows so when i saw this i would have assumed it would have been you know that darker color on the left would be the highest for boomers you know those that are closest to retirement or already in retirement trying to you know maintain their assets and then it would just start to slowly you know go down 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 uh, with some of the younger groups who maybe haven't found one um, but 
Tia, that's not what we saw at all here. I mean, we see some younger groups actually having higher involvement, uh, more consistent involvement than some of the older groups. Right, and I, I think that's pretty interesting because I, I would say that it shows a hunger for information, um, right? Um, also, I feel like just involvement in general has taken a turn towards being at max efficiency, if I can say it like that. With the boom that we've had in virtual meetings, uh, there, there's so much on-demand information out there um, that I, I feel like um, that's where it makes a little bit of sense when I'm seeing the Gen Z. Um, another thing to note, too, is when we're talking about like the moderately involved, um, I don't know if that's necessarily a bad thing that that seems like that's the biggest area is, is the gray area, um, because that could possibly be that's the way they like it. They don't need someone calling them every single week, um, but they love the fact that they have an annual review or maybe a, it's a semi-annual review and they're like, this is just good enough for me. So again, if you have questions with your current current clientele, where would they stack up uh, when it comes to this chart? Make sure you ask them that and just make sure you're checking in and seeing, you know what, here's my standard of communication. Um, are you good with that? Do you need a little more, need a little less? Um, you know, I think this blends perfectly with the slide that we just went over. Yeah, absolutely. And and actually, I'm going to even jump back here for a second because you, you touched on the, um, especially how those, you know, millennials, Gen X, millennial, Gen Z, you know, the, the age ranges of those can vary depending on who you ask. But, you know, millennials, you're getting into the mid 30s, um, down a little bit younger. Um, but you think about those, especially those younger groups, what they've grown up and grown accustomed with. Um, and then we see on this previous slide, the communication is more important to Gen Xers than maybe some of the older ones. So, um, you know, as you get into some of those younger groups, and I'll just show visual aid here, right? The younger groups have as much access to information that we've ever seen. So even I'm working, you know, in the uh, pandemic world, I'm working from home right now. Right next to me, I'm on a laptop, which I can get information from. I have my smartphone, I have a watch, and I have a remote because there's a TV here for uh, when I'm trying to catch up on news. So it's pretty amazing how, how much information we can get. So why wouldn't that impact your customers' expectations of communication that they're going to get from you? Um, and then to Tia's point, how they get it might differ, depend. You know, maybe they're okay with texting. Um, maybe it feels like people avoid phone calls now sometimes. They just want to get a text instead. Um, and so it just it's going to change. And, and to Tia's point, you don't need to, you know, um, do double backflips to do every specific thing because it's just going to be unmanageable. But just be thoughtful about that of how you can modify certain tracks uh, depending on certain clientele. So uh, we showed the generations, but one of the other things we did is we overlaid some uh, actual Axiom data to see around kind of their career tracks and so not just their age but actually how they sort of see themselves in a career track. So we have in retirement, late in career, earning years and career building. Um, and you, this is where you can see that linear trend. Uh, again, mo most are moderately involved and to Tia's point, that might, that might be fine, that might be what they want. Um, and then what we did see here, which, which makes probably more sense is in, as your career is going, the longer in retirement, you're starting to really dig into things more because especially if you're in retirement, Man, if something goes wrong, um, we've got some problems. Um, you know, you don't have that career and that income coming in maybe that you could to overcome it. Um, and so then those younger, you know, earlier in your career, you may have more moderate involvement um, as you're building that relationship and growing more assets that maybe need more, uh, more, of, more of a watchful eye. Um, so we, we did ask, you know, one of the obvious questions is, well, those that don't have a financial professional, how interested are they? Maybe they're just those that are like, nope, I got it. I'm going to figure this out. And back to our, you know, do we see a linear trend? We absolutely do. And I, and I think it's, it's one that makes sense, but I hope it's also one that gives some optimism uh, for our producers of the younger groups becoming the next customers and the next clientele for you longer term. Um, so Tia, I mean, if you look at those, that Gen Z, you know, that's, that's a young group, uh, pair them with millennials. I mean, gosh, you're looking at, even if I just did the very interested to somewhat interested, Gen Z is already almost 60%, you know, saying, uh, that their level of interest is pretty high. 
And if I can, if I can do this, I don't know if I can clap, but hopefully it's not too loud. I love, 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 love the interest of the Gen Zers. And, you know, we had already touched base on this. When we think about their viewpoint on information on demand, that's probably the best way to state it. Um, really, anything they want to know is literally at their fingertips. Isaac, do you remember having to do a, a report in school and you reach for the Encyclopedia Britannica, right? Um, oh, yeah. Reach for the Dewey Decimal System to look up some books, right? There was no on demand. That was, that was time consuming. And so uh, it, it's amazing that we have a viewpoint of what it looked like then <laughs> and what it looks like now to gain any of the information that you want to see. Um, so I, I thought it was cool that even though they have all this on-demand information and that's the way that they've grown up, they, they don't know anything any differently, um, they're still highly engaged on sitting down, again, either physically or virtually and talking to a financial professional. I just think that's so amazing um, because I, I know when it comes to millennials or, or Gen Z, when people think about um, that age range, they might think that um, uh, like they're spoiled or they get bored easy because they can get all the information quickly. And it's like, you know what, that, that's not a fair assessment. Um, they're, they're hungry for info. They want to get as much as possible. So again, we'll do my little claps, love, 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 the interest that we uncover here. I think, Tia, I think you forgot uh, participation trophies. That's the other cliche, right? <laughs> <laughs> no. Very um, true, yes. Yeah, and one of the other things that may impact this is, and we actually found this out through the Empowered research, is um, the number one place that people, at least in the Empowered research, said they got their financial advice was from the workplace. So people were getting all their advice and what they should do through, you know, whatever their company's retirement provider was. And then, I don't know, maybe the once a year, you know, rep from that company that would come in and you know, sort of reset their allocations and then, you know, wipe your hands clean and we're done for the year and we'll see you next year. You know, I think the job force has changed uh, quite a bit with these younger groups coming into the workplace. The types of jobs are changing and evolving, uh, certainly changing, you know, through uh, this, this uh, through 2020 and what it's caused businesses to have to evolve into. Um, and so I think this idea of like, I, you know, the, <laughs> The younger groups are not going to settle for the once a year showing up from your, you know, company's workplace 401k provider. I mean, they, to Tia's point, they want information when they want it and expect it, expect to get it as quickly as they can. Um, and so the good news, though, is that they are looking for those relationships. They are looking for someone to be a guide uh, so that they, you know, don't have to do all the end end research and have to be the experts. They're looking to an expert to figure that out. And so the same thing sort of applies here instead of the generations looking at the career track uh, perspective again the you know sort of the earlier on in your career the more the higher the interest overall especially if you look at combining the very and somewhat interested you know block you know half of the career building uh, would say that they're very or somewhat and then even slightly interested could just be the folks that are like yeah i know i need to i'm just super busy with anything else um but they there, when you say you're slightly interested, it makes me think that you know that there's a need um, and uh, that one needs to be there. But Tia, what did you think on this career track? Uh, one thing I, I wanted to touch base on because you had brought up the Empowered series that we did, you know, another shameless plug. We warned you, attendees, right? We're, we're going to talk about our treasure trove of stuff. Uh, but when it comes to gathering information, what's really interesting between men and women, uh, women, what they ranked the highest in on, on how they wanted to gain information, it was actually every option was sitting down with someone. So Isaac had said talking to your employer, um, talking to a financial professional, um, also talking to a close friend or a spouse. They wanted to have conversations. Uh, what we found, that was women. So men. Uh, what they wanted to do, the first thing they do, contact their financial professional. But what was, <laughs> I would say, I, I find it funny because you're doing a comparison here. But if they can't get a hold of their financial professional in a quick enough amount of time, it goes straight to DIY. And what I mean by that is it's hopping online, grabbing books, 
you know, whatever information I can read to try to figure it out myself, that's what I'm going to do. Um, and so I uh, just wanted to make sure I pointed out that was one of the interesting things that we uncovered there. Um, but uh, the thing that I want to point out on this slide is that the peak of very interested, that's taken by the career building and the earning years with the biggest grouping of the somewhat interested, it's within that same category. Uh, so to me, I feel like that's the best time to set the foundation of your retirement planning. You know, it's like the thought process of your goals and of course savings and some of the best habits on how to save. So I think there's a great opportunity here. Um, I, I know a lot of the financial professionals tuning in, um, we're all used to talking about uh, the retirement market, those clients or prospects that are getting close to retirement or they're already in retirement. Well, if you take a little look at the stats here, uh, you'd probably get uh, some pretty good interest uh, by having those workshops on the foundation of retirement building or the foundation of savings um, based on what we're seeing here. Yeah, it's. Uh... I was just thinking to you when he said they grabbed the books, I was like, why does that sound like an old fashioned, old timey statement? Now, <laughs> I feel sad when people don't actually get physical books anymore, but that's just they, they don't reach for that Encyclopedia Britannica. Don't you remember the person that go door to door when you needed a fresh set uh, because yours was outdated? Remember that? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Now, if you go to the half price bookstore, it's up on the shelf in the clearance area to get the outdated <laughs> one. So, you know, this all kind of culminated, this, this piece of it, like I said, this whole webinar today is really just a sliver of, of what we discovered in here. Um, but one of the things we did ask in here is, how interested are you in a product like a fixed index annuity? You know, I, I mean, kind of push come to shove, we are a, you know, fixed index annuity provider, um, and we want to know the, the client interest in a product like that. So the way we set it up is, we didn't just ask, what is a fixed index annuity? Because Frankly, there's a lot of people that still don't know about it. They don't know exactly what it is. Maybe they've heard the word annuity because of the lottery, trying to figure out how much money they'd be getting paid out over 30 years or something. But people don't really know much about the product, um, especially in the younger group. And so, you know, we certainly as an industry are trying to change that. Um, so what we did is we described the fixed index annuity in kind of general terms, saying, you know, you, it's a you know, retirement product that you can you know, put your money away. Uh, it, you can get part of the uh, market upside with no downside due to market downturns, maybe even turn on a lifetime income um, payment, that type of thing. So we try to keep it pretty high level and pretty interestingly to you of just how high the interest was um, on the, the different groups, but specifically the younger groups were the most interested in it. Um, and I think you, it kind of maybe touched the specific you know, nerve for you on why that is and how this kind of relates to your story. So do you want to share that? Yeah, I do. I, when I see this slide, I'm kind of like, hey, this, is, this would have been me on a slide. Um, so here's why. Me personally, without disclosing my age too much, uh, but I'm towards <laughs> the beginning of the millennial category, um, aka why I know about Encyclopedia Britannica. Um, but it's, um, I'm also conservative and um, I'm really drawn to the premium protection aspect of a fixed index annuity. And I tell you what, I think it's because of timing. Um, and that's because I saw what happened during 2008 with the stock market crash. And uh, where I was in that point in my life, I had just a few years under my belt being in my professional career. I had just gotten married, in fact. Um, and, and seeing what could happen to me, that happened to so many others. If you fast forward quite a few years that were on the brink of retirement, that, that was pretty scary. Um, so yeah, that really made me dig my heels into stating, hey, I'm conservative and um, this, this really fits into uh, the realm of, of what I'm, I'm interested in. It's the, it's the premium protection. It's the you know, potential market performance. It's um, knowing that I'm starting off young and I'm going to be chugging along, you know, kind of going back to some of the verbiage I talked about, setting the foundation for what I want to get done. This kind of stuff doesn't happen overnight, um, but a market correction, that happens overnight, and, and we saw that. So again, uh, where I was in my life at that point, that was pretty scary to see that. 
Yeah, I, you know, I think I would agree with that. And I, you look at the the events that these groups have gone through, and not that the you know the boomers and Gen Xers didn't go through it, but you know, millennials and Gen Zs grew up with going through you know dot com bubble bursting. You have you talked about two thousand eight, two thousand nine. Uh, more recently, that that COVID dip, which you know, fortunately has corrected and gone above, but it hits so hard and so fast. And I think the biggest difference is is just the amount of media and information about all of this stuff happening. So you know, I think some of the things prior to the to the 90s and 2000s is you had kind of you know your your three basic news channels and they would report on it. We have so much 24/7 news now and social media. And things like that. So all these big drops, I think, are hitting people more emotionally than maybe they had in the past. I mean, they certainly hurt in the past, but now it's the only thing you see when we have a market dip or a correction, like you talked about, or 2008, 2009, where not only is the market, but you see the job loss and you know all the other impacts of the recession. Um, I think that's maybe the biggest difference why it seems like younger groups who typically and historically have been more aggressive with their you know, uh, assets, whether it was in the market or otherwise, you know, it seems like there's starting to be a pullback now of younger groups saying, yeah, maybe some of it in that, but there's a part of me, and to your point, Tia, I just want return of premium. You know, I want the opportunity for some growth, but at the end of the day, I want to at least get back what I put into it. Uh, and so I think that's why, you know, fixed index annuities are starting to speak pretty clearly to some of these younger up and coming groups. You know, they may not have the full-fledged assets yet to just do a lump sum into an annuity yet, but getting them on board with the idea of it uh, in that sort of financial professional relationship, I think, is going to matter uh, long term so that when they are at that point of pre-retirement or retirement, you know, you know they can be ready for it. Um, and speaking of uh, COVID, you know, I'll, I'll sort of do a, another shameless plug. One per slide, Tia, one shameless plug per slide in the, in the handouts. Um, is the first white paper we did on this new Gen to Gen. We did it last year, and I believe it was October, where we pulled, we actually asked specific questions about COVID and the impact it had on their financial picture and retirement. And not surprisingly, um, but just sort of crystallizing the opportunity that you all as financial professionals have, most of the people that had, that sort of skewed themselves to maybe the higher risk spectrum or the more aggressive mentality they were starting to shrink back and shrink back pretty strongly into finding a more conservative premium protection you know type of product and then lo and behold now we're seeing on this slide the interest in FIA is just you know through the roof um, you pair those two things together a, a giant consumer block that is now starting to be a little more conservative because of kind of the, the shock of COVID and the impact of the shutdown um, and of the market drop. And then you have the interest in a product that does what an FIA does. It just makes a really nice story um, for, for you all on this call in your business. And I hope you're seeing that as you're talking about it. Um, so again, that's that's the shameless plug for the handout, but just to kind wait, of- Wait, wait, Isaac, Go ahead. we got to double up. We got to double up. Do you mind backing it up to the previous yep. slide? Because I know we're getting towards the end. You guys saw the peak of the disclosure. But I'm like, you know what, let's get a two for one, okay? So uh, one, of the, well, one of the things that I had mentioned, my favorite white paper that we've done, it's the Look Who's Not Talking. And it's really interesting that generation to generation, the conversations of retirement and savings and you know what you need to do or following your own advice. I mean, it's a very interesting how it's just these conversations aren't being had. And uh, one thing that was really interesting, Isaac, that you had said, talking about, uh, you know, when it comes to millennials, there's so much information. It's not information like uh, what we grew up with, with the three primary channels, or you sat down at the kitchen table and you asked your parents and you asked your grandparents a lot of curious questions, which we know from that white paper uh, isn't happening a lot anymore. Um, so that I just wanted to mention, that's why I'm thankful for client friendly pieces that we have here at North American, also uh, for the Alliance for Lifetime Income. You know, we, we've got um, things that are out there that are consumer facing, that are educating people saying, hey, here's some food for thought, some things that you need to know, and people are really drawn to it. I just uh, wanted to, to make sure I got my two for, two for one special on that slide, Isaac. Yeah, no, it's good. And it's a good segue to um, 
to one, you know, make sure you um, folks on here are downloading the handouts for this, uh, for this webinar and the white paper we did. Also, we put the COVID white paper out there, which again, I think is a very timely, um, I think when we started write, writing it, we had our fingers crossed that the pandemic would be over and it would be moot, but it's still very much a valid conversation that you need to be having. Um, you know, even with the market doing what it's doing, the idea of what COVID did to people's sort of attitude and behavior is what mattered. Uh, so you need to make sure you have that conversation. And then to Tia's point, segueing our next event in February, uh, and then uh, I believe we're have also having one in March. You know, one of the things we did ask about is, are you having those end of life, estate planning, legacy planning, whatever you want to call it, are you having the conversation? And we found a sizable group is saying no. And so we actually did an entire white paper just on the stigmas and the reasons why conversations like that aren't happening within families. So make sure to stay tuned for that. We want you to, to be a part of it. Again, a ton of quotes, which I love. I love hearing kind of the anecdotes and specific uh, verbatims of why exactly we're not having those conversations. But at any rate today, make sure you download our white paper um, and uh, on this and on COVID. And um, TL, I'll let you kind of finish up because I know you had one more thing. Yes, uh, so what you'll notice in the toolbar, it's uh, generated quite a buzz, and it's on our exclusive producers connection, our EPC loyalty program. And I, I'm thrilled to tell you, if you're familiar with how our EPC loyalty program worked in 2020, it's identical going into 2021. Uh, so for those qualifying details, um, information on how our three levels work, please double click that handout. Um, this loyalty program is really about helping you reinvest back into your business. Also wanted to give you a quick reminder. Uh, I had mentioned this at the beginning of the webinar, but there is a brief survey at the end of this. Uh, we want to gather your feedback. It's incredibly important to us. Please take a few moments to answer our questions. And I tell you what, it should pop up right for you once we conclude this webinar. Uh, and uh, in conclusion, I want to make sure you contact our sales support team with any questions you have. Um, I had mentioned some of our greatest hits earlier. Actually, Isaac and I talked about our greatest hits throughout the webinar. Uh, but if you want more research papers emailed to you, like on Project Apex, on our Empowered series, uh, our sales support team, they're ready to take your call. You can see the number there on the screen, 866-322-7066. And with that, take care, stay safe, and we look forward to having you on our next webinar.